Welcome back, everyone. Lance Skurve here. Brutally honest, opinionated commentary. New episodes daily. You have to go to landscurve.com because everything is not suitable for social media. We also have a Patreon and a membership on the YouTube channel. Anyway, we're not going to hold back with this. This is a hot topic that will definitely get on somebody's nerves or step on some toes. And not necessarily get on your nerves because you're going to have to have an open mind with this because this is a very sensitive topic. Okay? So, the name of the show, the title of the show, American Blacks, Do They Think They're Better? Now, you only have but so much real estate on the banner, so you can't write a whole book for a title. But what I really meant to say, and most will get it, American Blacks, do they think they're better than homegrown motherland Africans, our Kebulans, right? It doesn't matter what country. Even though each different country may have a slight difference in culture, there are certain perceptions that come true or, or, or stand true for many people across the motherland. And I want to speak about this first. I'm going to play a clip, right? That's going to set the tone for this whole show, but we're not going to just speak from that point of view. Understand that what I say in this show tonight is not to... I think there are some African Americans who are moving into these countries in the global south as colonizers. They are moving like settlers. Their actions and the entitlement that they are moving with are giving colonizer vibes. By that I mean displacing the local people, disrespecting the local culture, doing all the things to uproot the natives that a colonizer would do. To make life difficult, to make life more expensive, to make um, the native people uncomfortable in their own environment. Same way that we can recognize when white people are moving into spaces and gentrifying it, when white people are moving into global South countries as settlers and colonizers, we also need to recognize that behavior in ourselves. Okay. What do you think about that? <laughs> American blacks, do they think they're better? Are they acting like the colonizer? Hmm? Well, I have to say that there are some who come here, and I'm telling you, they're acting just like that. Seriously. And um, let's, let's focus on and go in this with surgical precision before you get mad at me for going in, because I'm going to go on the other sides too that you may understand or have a perspective about. Africa is a continent with many countries, many different cultures, and different types of rule. So what many Americans are going to have to understand is that it's just not one thing across the board, right? I can tell you, honestly, as an American, because I'm born American, never got treated like I belong there, I get treated, treated a whole lot better here in the motherland, but that's neither here nor there. As a, as, a, as a kidnapped African, I will say that there are many American blacks who come to the motherland either on a vacation or to live. And many of them don't understand that this is a different country. I'm going to speak on the behalf of Ghana, right? But it could be any other, Liberia, uh, uh, Tanzania, uh, Kenya, South, South Africa, whatever, Gambia, Congo, whatever. And there will be slight differences. And I want to hear the feedback from everyone too. Because this is going to go also on TikTok and there are a lot of people from the motherland who follow me there. And I don't want you to be afraid to speak. Okay, here it is. Many of that type, when people say American blacks, do they think they're better? And some say yes. Because you come here entitled. You come here as though you can't deal with the slight difference maybe in certain areas where the amenities don't work as well. There are some places here in Ghana that are world class. That are world class. And there are some places where there's so much to be desired as far as the amenities. The frequent uh, uh, lights cutting off frequently. right? You're not going to have access to everything all day and all night like certain large cities in America. It's just not going to happen. We're still developing over here. But for me, the peace of mind, the relaxation, 
the, 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 the lack of people putting on airs that I see in America. Status crazy, right? Hung up on what car you drive and how much money you make, but you're stressed the hell out. But you come here because you caught hell from that system of white supremacy. And now you want to come and duplicate this on the people who are here most often that welcome you with open arms. Now, before you get mad at me and say it's not all that perfect, I'm going to get to that part too. Surgical precision. That's what we do here. So, many come here and they turn their nose up. Oh, oh, you, you mean you don't have a 24-hour store that I can go to to get my tampons? What do you mean I can't get this type of food here or whatever? There's all the food here, different types from all over the world. You'll just have to go into the tourist area. And you've got to understand the economy here is not up to par. There are many people who can't find work. There are many people who don't have advanced skills because they didn't have a chance to go to school because they had to work whatever kind of work they had to do to make ends meet. And many will deal with having less. And what you got to understand, just like the affluent people in America, and especially some of our own, some of our own black people in America will turn their nose up at you when they get a little extra money, hit the lottery, uh, or have a good retirement, or whatever. Now they're better than you. And a lot of them get beat down with that in America and want to bring that over here where they want to be a big fish in a little pond. I'm not saying it's a little pond because... The whole continent can swallow up America several times. America is a midget compared to the size of Africa. But stop bringing your toxicity here. And this young lady spoke on it. And I applaud her for speaking her mind. Now we have other mindsets here. Okay? But many of you want to be the colonizer when you come here. You say, oh, and nobody really says this, but I can see it through their actions. They don't want to just let go of America. They don't want to let go of the Western world, the Western thought. Let go of it and you'll live a better life. Now, of course, if you're in a profession where you need to have certain luxuries like good internet, um, um, a good dwelling, all of that stuff, right. I'm not saying to live subpar. But there are people that I've known and come out here with it. Oh, no, you don't need to have internet where you are and you need to build a small house because you don't want to upset the African people. Are you crazy? I'm not going to sit here and live without what I need to do what I do and live better. No, I'm not nobody's savior. Building this house, who did it? Ghanaians. Who do I vibe with out here? I don't know anybody else. Oh yeah, I know a few other types of people from places that I don't want to really be bothered with anymore. But um, I'm good. And see, for me, just understand, I'm non-biased with what I say. I don't want to go to China to live. But if you drop me in the middle of China somewhere and said you can't leave, I'm going to make ends meet. I'm going to make do. Because I control my interior. Wherever I go, I don't need people who are fake and, and hanging around a crew. I don't need that. I've always been self-motivated. I've always been the life of the party, but also very much a loner. And I love being a loner because I get a whole lot of things done. I don't have to argue or be in opposition with egos and all this different stuff. No, so it's good for me. But if you come with these expectations that this is going to be America, no, I don't want it to be America. Someone asked me the other day, oh, Lance, when are you coming back to, to America? I said, I spent almost 60 years there. What, 57 and a half years? I've been here, September makes four years. I turned 61 in April. You do the math. I've been there over 50 years. Why do I want to go back to that? I, I'm not going to try to convince you what flavor of ice cream to go for when you go into the ice cream shop. If I like strawberry ice cream and you hate it, so be it. Get your chocolate ice cream. Get your, get your vanilla ice cream. Or get the swirl. Because some of y'all love swirling, if you know what I mean. But do it. Do Do you. So many people got angry at me when I moved out here. You watch. You're going to turn around and you're going to come right on back. <laughs> Fooey on you. September makes four years. And I'm having the time of my life. I sleep better. 
I, I do a whole lot of things better at my age, but that's not for public uh, 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 understanding. <laughs> you had to say something. No, but seriously. And they're trying to ruin it here too. The Western way of thinking, they're trying to bring in GMO foods, they're trying to bring in certain things that they will flag us if we talk about it, but you know what it is. They want you to take a jab like a boxer. We're not boxers. A left jab, right? They're going to push that whole thing again. They want to have us. Let me tell you something. The people here do get upset when they see that entitled, condescending, screw up your face. And they run with the stereotypes. This is the thing. You know, if, if, if you want to live a cosmopolitan, urban type life, there are areas out here that you can't tell the difference from the amenities that they have. But there are other people who may not have that kind of money. And they have to make do with what they have. There are a lot of people who come from outside of Accra or outside of the bigger cities. And they, they didn't have the schools or the schooling. They came from the country. So what are they going to do? And I'm not putting anybody down. You come into the big city to make ends meet and do better and get more money, and then you realize that you were better off where you were. You slept better, you had more camaraderie with your family, you spent more time with your family. It's the same thing like, like, like in New York City when I grew up in New York City. I lived in New York City for 38 years, and I did a whole lot more than most typical New Yorkers. I was nosy, I went here, I went there, and I saw all kind of things before the age of 16 years old. Basically, by then I knew it all. And damn, they done it all. Now, I didn't do drugs. I didn't do crime. But I have a hell of an education without even having to travel the world because I'm in control of myself and I'm very disciplined and I know what it is that I want out of life. See, many people are searching. And so when they see uh, uh, the ads for coming to the motherland and Aquaba and welcome, they get mad when they realize things might be a little different because human nature is human nature everywhere. No matter where you go in the world, you're going to have haters. No matter where you go in the world, you're going to have jealous people. No matter where you go in the world, you're going to have people trying to stop you from doing what you're doing. Narcissistic, evil, dark souls who are hollow that don't have souls. So I shouldn't have said they had souls. I've learned a lot in the last few years. These people who have no souls and want to live your destiny and suck your life force. You have them here. You have them born and raised here. You have them who moved here. So I treat people on an individual basis, but there are certain things that I see across the board. Now, many who are here, they look at social media, and I have to explain to them. I'll ask them, just as a joke, and I'm going to go out there and do some videotape asking people, would you like to go to America one day? Oh, my brother, I would, I would, I would go right now if I could. I would go right now, if, and their faces light up when they think about America. Because they've been taught to look down on what they have. I was telling a friend of mine earlier today that Ghana was once called the Gold Coast. And do you think it's called the Gold, Gold Coast because there's no gold here? But I don't know why they changed it to Ghana. But anyway, there's a big cocoa industry here. And a lot of the companies in Europe will come here and get this cocoa wholesale and send back candy bars expensive for Ghanaians to consume. And I have to blame a lot of the politicians and those who are leaders, but if the people got together and got some sense, I'm not putting you down by saying if you got some sense, but if there was true unity as opposed to, and I'm speaking to Ghanaians now, I'm coming back around. It's going to be a roller coaster ride, so buckle your seatbelts. If you showed unity and had no fear and stopped with the subservient mentality that comes from religion, teaches you to be subservient. When the God is inside of you, you have the power. And when you unify with others who have the same mindset, but you got to have the same mindset. You got to want to ascend and get better and go higher. But many don't. Now, I'm going to swing back to the Americans now. And I'm going to come on and, and, and talk, to, talk to a lot of my brothers and sisters here. I know I'm going to get dirty looks when I get in the street, but I have to say it. And again, this is not everybody, but this is something I see. A lot of the people here, I'm going to be honest with you, and I know I'm going to get cursed out in the comment section, but here it is. You think that all Americans are loaded and have a stash of huge money. 
Many of you think that we have a never-ending pipeline to just money that falls out the sky. And you think this also about America in general, that as soon as you get off the plane in your deepest fantasies, that money will be thrown at you like confetti on the winning team of the World Series. You know how they have all the confetti flying down out of the sky. Well, you think money comes like that. What you don't realize is that we may make more money in comparison, but everything there costs more. Everything there costs more. And you're not going to have the same joy over there that you might have over here while you curse this place and want to go to America. And really and truly, this is heaven on earth. And it may not be the complete heaven, but you can make heaven here faster than you can in America. So you look at social media and you see everybody driving brand new cars. Not everybody, but I'm painting the picture here. They have these big homes. Well, how can they be 22 and 23 years old and drive such an expensive car? Well, they might have good credit and you put money down. And when you put the money down, guess what? You have a car note. See, here in Ghana, when you get a car, there is no car note. Only for those who can put down some serious collateral or if you're a government worker, from what I understand, to a point. But most regular guys out here have to save up their money to get a vehicle. And with what they're making in comparison to America, it's going to be hard to get something of a luxury vehicle. Why would you want that anyway? When you're trying to just feed your family, right? So don't go on thinking. This is why so many Americans and people from uh, the UK and other places are coming here. But let me tell you something. Many will cuss. I'm, I'm not saying curse, but just be upset with and make the stupid faces. I get it. Folks screw their face up like, look at him, he's living privilege. Listen, the system in America is different. You do have pensions out here, but the pensions in comparison and the pay scale is much different. Like I said, and I don't know exactly, but I'm saying this for effect, that you have security guards. I mean security guards that they take one day of training and because they didn't have any prior records, right? They're not even carrying a gun. And they're working in a local pharmacy to make sure people don't steal things in there. A lot of them make more money in America than the police do over here in Ghana. I'm not putting anybody down. But guess what? That money in America is nothing. You got to pay mortgage. You got to pay rent. And do you know how much apartments are there? I'm going to tell a little bit about my business. The apartment that I had for two years before we moved into this house, it was $2,600 for the whole year. And it was in Oyarafa. Not quite the bustling downtown and the busy, busy, but it was a city. And the vans were right there. The churchills were right there. You can just hop on it and within minutes, well, not just maybe 20 minutes or so, be down at the Medina Market, go to the Crown Mall, go down Spintex, go. I mean, you could be everywhere. And come on home and do your thing. $2,600 for the whole year. <laughs> there are many who can't understand that many in America, many in New York City, what is their rent? It might be more than $2,600 a month. A month. I couldn't believe that. What a way to accumulate money. I was like, wow. We stayed there for two years and got ourselves set up. And still, we got work going on here anyway. But I love that because you know what? You're not paying a mortgage. As long as I'm here, I'm not going to ever pay a mortgage or rent or anything. And this is not showing off. This is to inspire. But this is the thing. With many who are here, they can't see that. You live here and you rent from somebody else. You're doing hard labor. Put some money together with your brothers and sisters. Buy some land. You can get it so inexpensive because you're born and raised here. Now, I just don't know. The work ethic for many who are here in Ghana, and it's going to make some enemies, but come on now. Many don't really want to work. They will say, oh, oh, I need money. I need work. And when they do the work, they half-ass it, some of them. Those of us who have come here to build, 
we've had to run into a lot of obstacles because you give guys part of the money and they disappear and never come back. Right? Then they come back when they want to. And then when they do the job, you got to push them to do the job that you paid them to do. And there's something about it. It's like they don't want to finish. And we're not saying everybody. There's some excellent contractors out here. But anybody who has come out here to Ghana to build as an American, like I said, they're going to jack up the price, raise the price on the services of building because you're a brony and you have lots of money. What about a middle class dude like me who had to work? I get a pension right now, but how much do you think that is? I didn't work the full term. But some people and most people cash out on the equity of their home and sell their home and come here to build something. And they want to build something that's comfortable for them. This home came straight out of my head. This home is my dream home. Every angle of it I love. I said, if I want to come out there and build from scratch, I'm not going to sit here and be worried about somebody being mad at me for living my dreams. But guess what? I have supported the Ghanaian economy. What other choice do I have? Am I going to uh, uh, support the uh, Chinese community? They hate me. They don't want to see me. Right? The Lebanese community, there's a lot of good Lebanese people that I've met here and from Turkey. But see, the thing is, many people don't complain about them. They don't complain about the Chinese coming here and going back to their country to make a profit from the resources that they take here. They don't do that. But the black American, they just can't stand to see us live good. A lot of them. I've caught more flax and funny looks and more opposition and, and just weird attitudes. Especially from the men because see, I know what I want. I'm a very focused and disciplined person. I know what I want. I will do without I've been disciplined all my life. Now, maybe there's a few, maybe one or two areas in my life where I wasn't as disciplined, and y'all know about that. But other than that, I mean, I'm a man. I got testosterone through my veins. What you think? I'm going to walk around with a rainbow? No, no, no. I don't spend my testosterone that way. I'm sorry. But it's up to every man to go down his own lane. And I have been ostracized. I've been criticized. Because I made the choice to do what it is that I'm doing. And then once you get out here, you're going to have those who come from the same place or the same side of the world that you come from who turn on you to try to stop you because all along they were haters. Ain't there something? So you got to watch it always. So this is why all of this that I've gone through the last few years, it has made me strong. Now we're on the come up. And what you going to do? It's a beautiful life here, but anywhere I am, I can make a beautiful life. I just do not want the stress, which I don't allow things to stress me. I'm going to stress you right on back. I'm the master of mind games. And you want to play mind games with me? I'm going to play it right back with you because I'm going to do what I have to do. But there are many here who don't understand how hard and difficult it is for most people in America, especially as American Africans, those who acknowledge that. Because you know you have a lot of them, I ain't no African. Well, you're melanated, look at you. you put, you're putting uh, 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 cream in your head to straighten it out, bleach on your face to lighten it up. Come on now. Let's be real. Look at that sickness. It's here too. It's all over the world. The colonizer has us all messed up. We don't know who we are. Some of these trans people didn't say anything wrong now. As mixed up as you say they might be, they might know themselves better than you as a black man, as a black woman. We are so divided. We have so many. We got more categories of us. And that's to break us down and make it where we can't see each, see each other with a certain commonality. Oh, oh you're this and I'm that. Uh, I'm Nigerian. You're Ghanaian. Oh, no, you're, you're American. You got it easy. Talk to me about those who have gone to America from any country in Africa, not just to go there for a visit and be so impressed, but to go there and stay for a while and work. Unless you have some type of acknowledged profession where you're starting out making big money, and that's far and few between because you will be shocked when you get there and you stay there for a while. I always use the analogy, it's like touching a hot stove. Somebody says, oh, don't touch the stove, it's hot. And you walk over and you touch it real quick. It ain't hot. I felt the warmth, 
but it ain't real hot. But guess what? Go on over there and put your hand on there and keep it there. It's going to burn you. So we have different mentalities that are clashing. We have resentments here. We have condescending people from the West who come here and, and, and fan the flames of that resentment of what they don't understand because they think that we're coming here just like the white man comes to the black neighborhood in America and gentrifies it. And some want to do that. And I am not, again, I worked hard. I worked hard for what I had. And I'm still working hard. I'm not there yet. But I'm happy where I am. And if I can take something that's there and build a dream with it and have such peace of mind in the time and, 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 and the space mentally and physically and spiritually. I haven't been doing many, uh, it's crunch time now to get things done. Haven't been doing as much, but I promise this whole thing is going to get revamped and I'm going solo. The tried and true will be there. But the riffraff, gone. I cannot take it. I'm solo now. I'm taking all my energy and using it for me and those who've proven themselves. And that's very much far and few between. And the best on this platform is yet to come. And I'm not going to apologize. But I'm not going to come here and romanticize and just turn myself into, let me tell you something else. You got folks who come here, right? And I've romanticized the good parts about this place, right? And I will tell on the parts that are not favorable and get you hip to what's going on here if you don't know. The deception. The, 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 the prices that are too high to get you. I mean, there's hustles here, right? Let me tell you one of the hustles. And I know it. You get somebody to do something, some work for you. And you got to get bags of concrete. And they'll tell you, oh, we need 50 bags. And the next day, you know, you give them the money, which you should not do. And I don't do this anymore. I've been crooked by many people, but I'm not saying nothing to them because they know that I know now because they're not doing it again. And those people, they're not coming here anymore again. Now, you, you give the money for those 50 bags. They come back the next day. Oh, I have 20 here. And in, in, in the, in, in the uh, establishment, the yard, the construction uh, uh, material uh, place, they're going to have the 30 and more tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. And they're watching you. And they're hoping that you forgot. I don't forget anything. I just watch you so finish your work. You'll never come back here again. Then, when that concrete runs out, they expect you to come up with more money, like you forgot. Say, hey man, because they weren't going to say anything. What happened to those 30 bags that I gave you the money for? Oh, oh, I, I, I. Now here come the excuses. My grandmother died. My father died. Uh, my grandbaby, he broke his foot. <laughs> it's okay. And some of these people have 18, 19, 20 grandmothers. Because that's the excuse that they use. So they milk you because you're a brony. Right? They don't understand the concept of having a regular relationship, business relationship that's ongoing. Many hate to finish a job because they feel that they can't get any more money out of you. So they start coming up with different ways to get a little more money out of you. And they'll do 85, 90% or maybe 95% of the work and disappear and want you to beg them to come back and pay them again for what you paid them already. Tell me I'm lying. And you have some good people out here who do good work. So don't come and say I'm bashing an entire country because this is my home and I've adopted it. And many have embraced me here. But I'm not going to tolerate dysfunction, whether it's from folks in the motherland or from Americans. Many Americans are so messed up in the head. They will smile. They, they wear the African traditional garb. But they still brought the same toxicity from America. You know the analogy that I use all the time when you lived in a roach infested apartment and you find a new home, a new house, a new apartment, a condo that's roach free and you can't wait to get out of there because all the roaches that are there. So you pack up your boxes, you spray a little bit, you bring those same boxes to the new home, house, condo, apartment 
And after two or three days, you see roaches crawling around. What do I mean by that? We still bring our old ways to the motherland and think just because we moved and changed locations that the internal will change also. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Many women I've seen have, have moved out here to the motherland and they're looking for, you know, a nice man to get with. Well, this is not everybody's situation, but this is something I've noticed. A lot of women in America, I said a lot, y'all. I'm not saying everybody, because y'all know I know some of your personal stories. This phone keeps popping off. I do not like that, because I have to read some comments from this. And folks, for some reason, they have a sense of, even when I tell them, listen, I'm recording for the next hour. Read this. Look at this. What are you doing now? Didn't I tell you I was recording? It's crazy. But you'll have a lot of single American women who will move out here to Ghana and other countries and they'll meet a man who charms their socks and their panties right on off. And they think they met the perfect man. But lots of times, and I do know good marriages, right? I'm not going to mention any names, but sweetheart, you know, I'm not supposed to say sweetheart. That irks you when I say that. I'm not saying it to you, but that's just a habit for my generation. So that tells you who, you, who I'm talking about. <laughs> You're married to a Ghanaian husband to, who, who I hold in the highest regard. And even he sometimes just doesn't like the common Ghanaian mentality because he's very much a disciplinarian, works hard, and gives it all to his wife. But it's not always that way. Lots of times you have men here who are looking for a free ride, looking for a place to live. Looking to get with a woman and sex her down real good, but she doesn't understand that it's only for the resources, right? And you think he's going to turn down hitting on one of your girlfriends when they come? No, they're not. Or somebody else? They're not. They're going to continue to play around and keep their eyes open for the next catch. That's just the way it is. That's why I stay by myself. No matter who you are, you got to earn your time with me. I'm a lone wolf. I'm solo. And I used to be that way when I was younger. I was always a life of the party, had friends on the block and everything like that. But I used to love to get up and go out to Manhattan by myself, go to the bookstores, go to the restaurants, go look at music and bring music home, walk around and see the culture. I know people that they travel with their wives and never come out of the hotel room. They go to a different country. Oh, I was watching reruns of, of some shows that I loved back in the 70s. And you're in a different country. We are sick. We are all messed up. So many of us are all messed up. And we don't even realize it. And that goes across all borders. But now you move into that new place. I'm almost taking off a track here. And you were so happy that there are no roaches there. But see... What you didn't realize is that you brought those roaches from the old place into the new place because you didn't check those boxes. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because a lot of people feel they can put on the traditional garb, change their name, but they have the same old mess in their heart. Ain't that something? And then you have those who may live in the motherland who revere America and go over there and when they come back, they're looking down on the people that they came from, like they're better than them. In my first instance of noticing this, because I'm over from the West, I'm from New York City, is Jamaica. Now, my father was born in Jamaica, November 5th, 1916. So if he was alive now, <laughs> was he 108? <laughs> but he's an old school Jamaican, a solid Jamaican. A hard-working Jamaican. Not this foolishness, the bumbaclot business and all of this, wanting to prove your manhood and all of this stuff like that. Because you know that, that that's the island where they did the, the buck breaking, you know. So there's a spiritual cloud over Jamaica with many of the men. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to tell it. I don't hate you. So that's why they want to prove their manhood. Be a man, be a man, you must be a man. I am a man. I'm, I'm a male and I am a man. Well, what denotes manhood? Being a man of wisdom, taking care of your responsibilities, not running from them. 
So you don't tell me to be a man. I don't. I'm debt free. I'm not saying that to flex on anybody, but I've been responsible with my money. And I've been responsible, for the most part, with my penis. Made a few slip-ups here and there, but for the most part, your seed is valuable. You don't spray it all over the place to every, every woman who may have a nice ass. Asses are everywhere. Come out here to Ghana and go down by the market. You will see some asses that you haven't seen in America. So What? It's what's between the woman's ears. And when people come here from the West, they will show their ass too. This has nothing to do with Ghana. Let's go back. I don't, I don't know any folks from Trinidad here, Barbados here. There's all of the Caribbean out here. I know Jamaicans, right? And a lot of them run with gossip out here. They change up on you. In America, oh, brother, yes, we're all one. Unity, brother, yes, yes, yes. When you get out here, oh, I'm Jamaican. You, you, you American. You know how many times I've been reminded I'm American? I know that. What, you mad? Because <laughs> when you were younger, you wanted to go to America so bad. And then when you went to America, you found all Canada. You found out that it wasn't all that. And you never got your, you got your nigga wake up call. Now you're mad and you want to come out here and be mad at me. I ain't do nothing to you. I'm an American. You see the dividing lines that we have amongst each other? And, and, and we're so deceptive. We try to alienate some people and rock with others. I saw somebody that I have seen before, and I know he knows me because he runs with the enemy, and he gave me the, in the supermarket, he looked at me and looked down at my feet, brother, I never had a conversation with you, but you're going to run with something that some other pig dread wearing, pig looking, third trimester pregnancy looking punk ran with, and you believe it. Because we clan up with those who, and those people are screwing each other over too. Not talking to each other. Look, I mean, I'm not going to talk to you if, you if you try to screw me over and run with lies and put my name in it and have people looking at me all funny because I'm good. I can do my stuff solo and I'm happy. Look, go to landscurve.com and look at the artwork page. How long do you think that stuff takes? It takes a lot of time, solitude, thought, meditation. I love it. I'm a talkative person when I want to be. It's no problem for me to put out lots of content and I will. When everything is completed and the time is, is done. And some of your minds are going to be blown. doesn't blow my mind because it's already created already. I have a very strong mind. I'm not a weak-minded individual. And I always come back. And so when you come out here, you're going to have to have a strong mind. I was told that it should be called the African expat boot camp. To get your mind ready that this is not America. But it's better in so many different ways. But you're going to have to... Lean away from some of these amenities that you've gotten spoiled with. And you can't look down on people because they're not looking to get the things that you get. And you got to deal with people here that may think you have lots of money. And they want money, 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 money. Give me money. It's sad. Because that's not going to answer the need to fulfill a dream. We're all mixed up. From Memorandum 46, that modern day... Willie Lynch letter, I'm like with the Willie Lynch letter, it is so true. Google it, Willie Lynch. Google it, Memorandum 46. I believe I have that on landscurve.com. I'll, I'll dig it up and I'll put it on the YouTube link or in the description area and on the TikTok um, description area as well as Facebook and Instagram and all the other places that we're on. Because I'm rebranding and revamping everything right now. A new manifestation. I ain't got room for the crap. Those days are done. I don't do toxicity and chaos. I don't do gossip. So half your asses are gone. And I knew it all along. But like I said, we're so divided. And when you look at Memorandum 46, and it basically says, not verbatim now, but we have to keep the American black away from those Melanated black Africans who under their feet have great resources because many who are in the motherland don't realize what they have. And I tell they can't tell you that I'm lying. Many don't realize what you don't realize what you have. If you would just collectively stop trying to be like the West and build and think on a long term level. Let me tell you something. When this place is finished, possibly by the end of the year. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. There's things that I've been introduced to 
that I can see. And I'm not going to hold back because someone thinks that I'm gentrifying this part of the world. Like I said, you don't say anything to the others who come here. You lead them to your secrets. You lead them to your spiritual secrets. When them women come down here, you give them the best dick and down they ever had. Because you think you're going to get something. You think you're going to have a way out of here. I'm spanking everybody tonight. I told you. Brutally honest, opinionated commentary. Now, I'm going to put the information where that clip came from. And I'd like for you to go back and listen to it again. And it was reposted on Instagram. Like I said, I'm going to get the particulars. And in in, after this is over and I set this thing up for you to listen to. Here's a comment that was very important. I hope everyone is smart enough to not turn this into a us versus them situation. It's way too easy to cause division between us. It is. Because our unity is a threat to someone's stronghold over us as a global melanated people. We argue over the lines and boundaries that were drawn in the sand and drawn in the earth. That somebody else did, so, oh, uh, uh, I'm this and I'm that. And they split up our languages so we can't communicate. They, they, they do not want a united black Africa. They do not want independent currency that is backed by gold and backed by resources. When they see the potential for that, here they come with their propaganda to turn you against your brother. To turn you against the one who looks just like you. And you put it in your head. Oh, you're different than me. What? And guess what? Your colonizer doesn't give a damn. He don't give a damn. All the all the same. But you're too stupid trying to be like me and be against your brother. And you can't see the wealth that you have. So they come up with all of these laws and all of these contracts and agreements. Look at how France has, has milked certain countries out here in Africa ridiculously and America never said nothing about it America don't say nothing about it because all of them are the same but you think that they love you because when they come down here they smile and they may spend a little money and you lay up and have sex with them catch their diseases you know the inferiority complex uh, I'm better now because I have a white woman I'm not saying that I'm saying that many of you men say that and you have these dating apps where black women and black men, but a lot of black women, they'll go to church on a Sunday and praise God and bring their tithes. Not to say where those tithes came from because they were on their back the night before after meeting some Turkish dude, a Lebanese dude, or some white man off of one of these apps who want to lay it with some good black ass. I'm not calling you black ass. But what you have, African woman, is very sacred. It's beautiful, but it's sacred. It's to bring more of us into the world as they try to destroy us with their substances. I know I'm not saying anything bad with that. Like I said, boxers take, take jabs. We're not supposed to take jabs. But they see you as a plaything, and some of you are so hungry for money, and they promise you status, and you think, well, if I lay up with him, and he said, you know, he gave me a little money, and when he goes back to France, he's going to call for me, and he's going to marry me, and, all. and some of you dudes, too. You get, you get, especially in the Gambia. I heard about the Gambia. These black dudes are nailing these old, wrinkled-up white women. Their vaginas got less wrinkles than they face. Liver spotted down, say you like cottage cheese action, and they just down in there loving it. <laughs> eating it. Eating it and eating it and eating it well. Do doom 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 do doom doom doom. Because you feel that's your ticket out. Because those men who are with those women, they're probably messing with each other anyway. But they understand that they get the resources and you get a little thrill from well, a few pennies thrown your way. And they rule over you. And back to the American women too. I wanted to say this. It's a point that I forgot. Many women from America. I say many again. I'm not saying all. Anything I said tonight. In this particular segment. I don't mean all. Okay. Okay. But many women who come here single by themselves. They've been in abusive relationships. They've been in traumatic situations. And they don't want that to happen again. So what now? They get their retirement. They had a little bit of money. 
that comes to them for the rest of their life. It's a sweet thing. Trust me. And they get a man from here because they are in control. They bought the house. They built the house. They put it together. They have their vehicle. And they can easily toss this fool out because there's so many other men who are looking to take his place. Who will go to the deep dick in Olympics and win the trophy, win the gold medal. But when you realize that they're running after everybody, most of them, most. And they see you only as a dollar bill because look, look, that's the way some of the women are here. Some of these young girls. There ain't no child agencies out here. I've, I've been approached by 13 and 14 year old girls with the school girl outfit on. Now, for those pedos, they like that. Wear the pigtails and lift up the skin. Oh, you know how it goes. They didn't say, hi, how you doing? You know, I want to duck your sick. Like I said that, right? I'm not saying the real thing. They didn't say that. But they come around, could you buy me a piece of candy? Could you spare a few coins to buy me some candy? They come home from school. He said, okay, you're not thinking nothing. Here, get us some candy. And she's following behind you, licking her lips. Say, hey, that ain't no regular lip lip licking. How'd she know that? I had a girl. I'm not going to say too much about this situation because I don't want to put her out there that much. I still have enough respect for her and her mother, which her mother didn't have respect for her. She knew me from doing videos in the neighborhood. She showed up at my house and she waited for my wife to leave and came over with her little schoolgirl outfit and, and the, the waistline was up under her little titties. Pulled it up high so you can see them legs. And she got a cheap pair of stilettos. I think it's like somebody was walking on it on the backs or something. And she was tippy toeing because one of the heels are broken. Trying to be sexy. Heavy makeup. Hi, are you alone? I want to do video with you. Yeah, I know what kind of video you want to do. But no, you're not coming in here with that. Don't come here no more. And a lot of the mothers approve of that. They're not going to ask you where you got it from. Because for some, the economy is really, really rough. And it will cause you to do things. I'm not demonizing everybody. No. Let me look at one of these other comments. <laughs> Girl, go tell the Belgians this or the Chinese. Y'all kill me. Because many will speak about the black Americans coming over here who are like colonizers. Some do have that. And some love it here. I love it here. I get along with everybody here. Well, no, 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 no. Let, let me, let me, let me change that. I don't get along with everybody here. Most of the people I don't get along with weren't born and raised here. Most of the Americans, most of Jamaica, I don't, I don't want to be bothered. I already saw how it was. It's like it's gonna be, you got to clan up and be all up in each other's business and whatever. No, I ig it. Build the wall and live in there. Oh, you're trapped. You're not really living life. You have to be out. No, I don't have to be out with these people. It's me and the creator. I have a legacy to create. I got things to do. If you are a kindred spirit of the same mind and about something, we can roll. But you know back in the day, probably your mama, your father, or auntie, grandma, baby, in this lifetime, you be blessed if you only have one or two good friends throughout your life. All the rest of them will show their ass after a while. And like I, uh, I was going to say tweeted, but I have to say X'd, <laughs> X'd out <laughs> because Elon must turn Twitter into X. Follow me on Twitter or oh, on X. Lance Scurve Media. I haven't been doing anything much over there, but I'm going to start putting out little sayings and stuff every day. I've, I have such a renewed enthusiasm for my social media. It's just uncanny because I dropped the dead weight. The egos and people want attention and trying to get cash app money and they want this money and they'll turn into anything. Attention whores on social media. But it's leading us to our doom. And we don't realize it because we're being programmed in our mind. And the colonizer doesn't have to show up his, show his face. There's so many of us who are willing to be used for the propaganda. For a few baubles and rubies and trinkets and pieces of gold and silver. And we'll sell them out. But like I said, overall, when you communicate clearly as to what you're trying to do, and you are a no-nonsense person. And you focus on the task at hand on what you do. And you make people show and prove you'll have no problems. You get people who come out here and every day they talk about how bad Ghana is. 
I gave you a few uncomfortable situations here, but there's nothing a strong person who has good communicative skills can't overcome in human insight, in a discerning spirit. I love it here. I've been trained well in the West, and I know what I like. I know the peace of mind that I have. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go to sleep soon. And I'm just looking forward to that deep REM sleep. And I dream so clear. Breathing the mountain air. No gossip. No, 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 no. Get away from me with that foolishness. I wasn't trying to bring my old roaches in boxes to the new land and put an ankh on and, and try to be somebody's prophet. But my life is a disaster. But I can't say anything because I put up a weird front. No. What you see is what you get. And the spirit tells me so much. And it's funny how information just drops in your lap. So I laugh at these frauds. I laugh. Not because I'm venomous. But you ain't fooling nobody. You ain't fooling nobody. You got to be on the up and up. And you will find good people here. You'll find people who scheme on you. You'll find people who are on the level of a beast in America and here. There's a video circulating about... The customs uh, agencies over in Tema and how many of these customs agents went literally fighting over the goods that people were shipping in, taking it, charging such high money to ship a car over that people couldn't afford it and walked away. And then they took the car. TVs, this and that. I had a lot of my stuff destroyed, kicked in. Computers and screens kicked in. I had a pack so well you can drop it off a 10-story building and nothing happened to it. They took that stuff out and, and did what they did. So there's a lot of envy. Because you're different when you come here. But are you really? Don't we want the same things? Maybe those who come from other places who have a little knowledge on certain things, they can help. I don't know about anybody else. But I'm not coming here to look down on anybody. I'm free. I walk around in the yard barefoot. <laughs> I blend in in the village. I don't even really want to go down in the city half the time. That emulates the bigger cities in America. I don't even want to go down there. I went down today and turned around and flew right on back up. Took care of business and got out. I love being home. This is my fortress. This is my castle. This is where I have peace of mind. And boy, it's going to be a heck of a ride with Lance Curve because there's nothing to stop me. I'm over all the crap that I've been through. I'm stronger than ever. I'm like Mike Tyson after Buster Douglas. You see, he stopped training the same way. He was running with all the women and all this. And see, now he learned a lesson and he came back stronger. <laughs> oh, that's the way it is. I'm going to read another comment. We're going to wrap this down soon. I wanted this to stoke curiosity, questions, inquiries, and let the discussion begin. And they remove on these different social media platforms a lot of comments. So when I post this on landscurve.com, go there and leave your comments. Most of you ain't going to do that anyway. You're so hooked on social media. Here we go. I think this is a brother from the motherland. We quite literally lack the infrastructural capability to do anything she is saying. We can't enforce any displacement. We have to abide by the laws of these nations or be expelled. We don't have footholds in Africa or any other nation to do as we please. At most, we can use some money to buy land. The U.S. government isn't sending us there, building uh, FOBs to protect us. Uh, while contractors build American towns and villages in the global south. We are immigrating. At most, our spending habits and maintaining economic connections to the U.S. is having an inflationary impact. But please note that it isn't even remotely as large of an issue as China and the IMF, World Bank's predatory loans to the same nations. We literally have tons of documented evidence of other ethnicities actually recolonizing the global south. There aren't enough African Americans making these moves to do what she's saying. This, and he's responding to another woman who made a comment. African Americans aren't setting up shop 
gobbling up all the resources and paying a higher rate while doing so just to ship in and pay only African-Americans, blocking out Africans from new African-American businesses. We aren't treating the global South like nomad capitalists exporting all resources and escaping market competition to tap these other nations. We aren't anyone's enemy, but we're treated like one while fighting for our survival in the land we're trying to escape. We have a lot to offer, and that's why the U.S. has historically banned us from such moves en masse while we have, while we have been motivated to do so. But sure, continue with the piling on to the African Americans. We'll be the scapegoat while so many ignore the actions of others in the global South by opposing leaders who seek to sever ties with the West just as African Americans are attempting to. Whoa. We're going to come back with this topic because I want to keep this sized to fit into TikTok, which gives me an hour to upload. I can go longer elsewhere and do lives and stuff, but I want to do it this way so we can do lives if you want and have the interaction. But I haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg. I was a little bit sensationalized because I want to poke the bear and get you to talk. But just remember that everything I said in this particular segment wasn't a general general generalization. What's happened to me? I'm I'm tired, y'all. I had a long day and it would rain most of the day. But yeah, we're starting out with this. We'll go more in like my favorite term, surgical precision. Make sure to go to landscurve.com, an online magazine established in 2001, containing written articles, thousands of talk shows and discussions, cutting edge cartoons, as well as erotic expressions and tasteful adult photography. It's definitely not for the faint of heart. Once you get a taste of the world of Lance Curve, trust me, you'll be back for more. LanceGurve.com. Bold, raw, and uncut. So my friend, take it for what it's worth. Your heaven and your hell is right here on this earth. Tune in to radio's hottest talk show. Bringing you the realest uncensored conversations. With the boldest man on the net, Lance Skurve.